need to fill in on the first, uh, you know, this um, a different Sunday because I usually do the second Sunday, and um, so that'll be testimonies next week and everything. So, um, so anyway, um, the Lord gave me a message um, for this month. This is the first Sunday. It's usually communion Sunday, but it ties in. It's what it's what the Lord gave me. It's kind of a a simple message. It shouldn't be too long, but it's it's nothing more important. It'll, 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 um, it's how you respond to this message going to determine everything about your life and eternity. So it's uh, it ties in with your salvation, and and um, it's something we should do every. It's not going to be anything more important than this. It, but we're going to make it very, very simple. Um, Last Saturday, I was going to go out and um, I call it without spot, or, without spot or blemish, without spot or blemish. Jesus is coming back for a bride without spot, or blemish, or wrinkle. And um, anyway, it was a real it was a real life incident. Um, I was going to go out to Trey last week, um, last week, um, and um, I I didn't. Usually church clothes, I'll just wear at church. You know what I mean? I'm consecrated for that. You know, I wouldn't go want, want to go work on the car and the shirt or anything like that. You know. But so anyway, anyway, um, I was put on a white linen, like it was a linen or cotton shirt. It was more rough hue. You know, with the button up like this, with with um, button pockets and everything. And I noticed, and I, and I just noticed. I mean. Nothing had changed uh, since the last time I put it on, but it had this spot on it. It had this visible spot. I, I washed them correctly and all that, right? But but it really just stood out to me, this spot on the shirt. I said, you know, I don't really feel good. I was going to wear this. So I need to, um, let's see if I can get some bleach or, or I can get something there. You know, it was just so evident right there. You know, before it didn't bother me as bad, but you know, it just it just piled in right there, and so I I put some bleach on it a, a, about three different times, and then I, I washed the spotted area, then washed it out with water and just threw it in the jar, and then I went out and um, like I said, I was waiting for someone that day after I prayed, but you know, every time you look in scripture. Every time you look in scripture, when you see spot, it's usually talking about stains and those in those things. And if, if, we're, if we're not careful, the longer we allow stains and sin in our life to take root or just stay there, stagnant, stay in there, the harder it is for to get out of it. And then you you become complacent or you start ignoring everything. You start ignoring it and just bypassing, looking over every everything like that. And um, but but there's um, then then after looking at this, then there was a couple other shirts I need to you know to take care of. But that's the way it's in here. When we let certain things and we don't judge it in our lives. But anyway, the longer we allow stains or sins to remain in our lives, the harder they are to get out. Some may be there permanently, like if you have a chemical stain, right? And certain types of sin in there, if we if we don't if we don't really deal with them, they can they can when 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 we check out, we're never gonna know when we're gonna go. Any of us, whether you're young or old, those things are gonna be there permanently throughout eternity. Okay. Okay, we can't get comfortable with it. Acts twenty two and fourteen. Says, all right, that's you know you're familiar with the apostle Paul, right? Um, he was um, very zealous, you know, for the traditions of our fathers, right? Very true, very um, very well educated. He worked hard at it and everything, and um, he was he was actually persecuting um, the Christians because he didn't believe the Messiah could come. You know, there's a lot of messianic prophecy. Where you know he's going to come back and rule and reign, but but um, till that time Jesus came as a servant when he came to still uh, be coming back with a vengeance. Hallelujah. But anyway, um, he said, "Go in 
to um, say, who are you? The Lord, he spoke to him in the Hebrew tongue. He says, I'm Yeshua. So, um, he said, um, I'm the Messiah. He came up. Mashiach. And he said, um, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Lord, I didn't know why you were persecuting me. You know, he said, what would you have me to do? There was bright light, brighter than the sun. King, and square one, right there, right there, all got blinded because the light, you can't look at the sun for very long at all. You know, oh my God, but you had this, this light of the glory there. And it just blinded him. He said, go to Damascus, right, where he was heading before. That's in Syria. You're going to go there. And um, they will be told you what you should do. You know, there, there's, um, there's going to be um, a man, Ananias, and he's going to lay his hands on you. So he went there. He stayed with a guy named Judas when he went into the town there. Acts 22, 14 says, Ananias laid hands on Paul. To receive his sight, and he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee that thou shouldest know his will, and to see that just one, that's Jesus, Yeshua, and should hear the voice of his mouth, for thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now, and Ananias said, And now, why tarriest thou? Arise. And be baptized. Be baptized and wash the way. God said, calling on the name of the Lord Jesus. He told him, why are you tarrying there? You know, go um, get baptized. Wash away your sins. Right at that point, you know, he accepted, you know, that Jesus was the Messiah, right? And, and he was born again, but said, you have to wash you have to wash those old sins away. You have to be buried in baptism. So that was an example. If you're born again, you can't overlook this. You need to get baptized. I don't mean just break a little little water. If it's on the fly and I won't see anybody again, you know, we'll do that. You know, but I mean, you know, my God, go down in the water. It says it right here. This is in the Bible, right? Amen. So I mean, you get immersed, washed it. Then that's the way it was in the, in, in the Red Sea. There's like six, in the book of Hebrews, there's like six examples of um, baptism, doctrinal baptism. But when the children of Israel went into the Red Sea, which is correctly called the Sea of Greeks, right? They went through, the Lord made a way, they stepped on dry ground, went in the way. But whenever, when that was a form of baptism, where the, where the water was just surrounded them, where they went through, they left this old life behind them. And then when it closed in on the Egyptians, right, when it closed in on them, that's the way your baptism is. If you don't get baptized, if you don't do that, you, you know, you, you, might, you might have something pursuing you from behind in your life if you don't get baptized. So anyway, when you get baptized, that closes your old life off. You're buried. You're crucified with Christ. You died 2,000 years ago. You are buried in baptism. Then when you come out of the water, you're raised into that new life. So you can't downplay it. You can't downplay this. I mean, this is really important. Sometimes we overlook these things, that these things are, I, I don't make the rules. Right? I, I'm a herald of salvation. What the herald does is back in the old days when the king would say, Hear ye, hear ye, he go <laughs> to town on, on a horse or chariot or whatever, and he would read the scroll of what the king would say and what, what the king expected. Right? And he had to make it comprehensible where it was understandable to everyone, all of the citizens, all the king's subjects. So it is not need to go over anybody's head at all. But anyway, 1 John 1 and 7 says, so you don't want your old life to close in on you, you know? Amen. So just get, um, get, you know, get baptized if you haven't been baptized. Amen. Get back. Amen. And that, that way you're buried with Christ in baptism, then you're raised in that new life, a new creature, right? Um, what was it? Um, Corinthians 5, 17, if any man, or oh, woman, be in Christ, is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new, and all things are of God. So you become that new creation. You, that's your completion. That's the icing on the cake, so to speak. 1 John 1, 7 says, but if we, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, 
Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. That we walk in the light. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in it. If we say we, if we're in denial, right? If we're in denial, we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us, but we miss it every day of our lives, whether you know it or not. I mean, I do. I mean, I, it's just how bad, you know, how, how much we all have liked sheep and have gone astray. It's what it says, that's what it says in the book of Isaiah. So that's our sin. If we've gone our own way and not gone, gone the Lord's way, then, then we are like we are like sheep who just wanted away from the Lord. And every minute you have to, you, you said you can keep them in perfect peace of mind and stay on them. We have to have that tunnel vision. We have to have our minds on the Lord at all times. Amen. That's, where, that's how the enemy um, comes in and gets somewhere in your life. He starts dropping these thoughts, these suggestion. But you don't have to, you do not have to act on these suggestions by the enemy. They're very subtle. They might be weaved in with God's word, but it might be distorted. Do you remember how you, you remember how how um Satan went to Jesus and says if you're the son of God, make these stones become bread. Well these stones back then, these um stone, river stones were real smooth. They're oblong. That's the way the bread used to look in those days. Did you know that? They were, they looked, I mean, you, there was no discernible difference as far as the color and the shape or anything, you know. So he was probably hungry after, after all those days of 40, 40 days. And then he said, you know, um, he said, throw yourself off, what? At the wing of the temple, right? Um, he said, no, I said, he will give you dangerous charges on you. He said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God, right? He said, there would be no other gods before me. He said, look, here's what he said. He said, all these kingdoms, he showed them all this in a moment of time, Jesus, he sure. He knew it was Jesus. He could tell in the spiritual realm, demons can tell about where you at in God, believe it or not. They'll know if you're not where you're supposed to be, and then you'd be easy stricken for them, man. I'm serious. But anyway, he said, all these, all these kingdoms, he said, he will give them to you if you just bow down and worship. You, you want to know the ironic thing about it? They were his. He didn't own them, but Adam was the ruler of the earth. He was the god of the earth, Elohim, right? He was the ruler under uh, the under ruler under God, right? And Eve, his wife, there were a team, right? So what happened is when the enemy uh, had tricked them to Eve exactly to sin, right? They're both responsible. You know, he should have drilled, he should have drilled Eve on all this stuff. He didn't do it. He didn't drill her on all that stuff. Right, Adam didn't drill Adam didn't drill Eve on the on the on the routine there. So he's responsible. So if you're the head of the house, you have to drill Drill your wife with, with, um, with the word of God and wash her with water. By the word, you're responsible for it, right? Well, well, I mean in a good in a good way. But, but he's supposed to love his wife the way that Christ loved the church. And right, because what happens is if we don't treat them like if we don't treat them like the general weak vessel. That can hinder our prayers. And the next time you next time you want a new car or next time you want a new new truck, you say, No, you didn't you didn't um you didn't um treat your wife right. You know, you're gonna have to drop that jalopy a while. Or he might or he might close you off <laughs> but God won't hear your prayer unless you treat her like a weak like the, like the, the sensitive weak vessel. But but the thing the thing is he he is he was created by the Father, right? He created by him and he was taken out, out of him. Right? So he um so there's the Father God, there's Jesus Christ, the Son, right? Under that comes the husband, then the wife. You know, that's the way and then the 
children after that. But that's God's command. But you're responsible too. You're responsible for what goes on. Yeah, it can be heavy. Marriage is a heavy responsibility, man. You know, there's a lot of. I mean, um, you don't you don't have all the good times all the time like when you're dating, man. Then you most, mostly work. I mean, paying bills, I was hoping I'd start building up some money and all this stuff. I've got to pay this out. I've got to do that. You know, you know, but the, the way it is, it's responsibility, man. Amen. It is. Amen. You know, it's, it's not cheap, man. It costs. It has a price, man. But you know what? If you do what God wants you to do, he'll reward you. He'll send the blessing to you to bless your family. Do what he says. But you know you can't you can't let your prayers be hindered. You know you have to treat you have to be patient with it. The Lord told me, um, um, it was like yesterday. It was yesterday I went and got the prayer and, and down this little narrow road I live, right? It has a double lane so people don't pass. It's a twenty five mile an hour road. And the man just he had a trailer on the van and all this zoom. Hi, and I was trying, you got a big oak tree, and I was trying to get out, you know, and then, and then when I was going out, I saw him where he turned in, and I, I said, hey, you know, how about slowing down? I was going 28, you were going faster than that by my house. You didn't have a ring or God. Well, I said, you know, you were in, you know, by my house, you know, fast. It's very dangerous. People have to get in and out of their driveway. Then I prayed after a little while, but the Lord told me, he gave me an instruction yesterday. He said, he said, um, he said, be flexible. You know, I didn't, I was, wasn't ugly with the man at all, right? I wasn't ugly with the man, you know. But then, but the Lord told me to be flexible with people. You know what I mean? And you know, and the thing is, Christian, we have to be flexible with people. It's not always easy to do. You know, but the Lord told me, told me that you never get so far in the Lord. You never get so far that you're you're gonna you're gonna be topped out at his level. I mean, like I said when I came in here, you never graduate from the school of Christ. You never graduate from it. I mean, but you know, but, but I mean, you know what? He's always right. He's always right, no matter what. But he's always right. You know, if there's if there's a communication breakdown, guess where it comes from? If there's been a thing, you know, even if something is not wrong in itself, if the Lord tells us to do it, right, His ways are higher than our ways. We go ahead and do it. Does he please? Yeah. Right. And he'll he'll work it out. You know, that's that's the way it is. But he's always <clears throat> he's always in the right. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But every day, my friend, there we are not a hundred percent where God wants us to be. You know what I mean? Believe it or not, I mean every day, even if we don't go out there and do something ugly, we're never a hundred percent of where we, what God wants us to be at the time. So we say, well. Lord, what do you want me to do? Proverbs 30 and 12 says, There's a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. That There's so many people today that think they're in the right all the time. Right? A generation what, that are, are pure in their own eyes, yet are not washed. From their sins, not washed from their filthiness. And in fact, when a lot of these things were written in the time of Proverbs, too, that was not Solomon, right? That was Agar. But anyway, um, the thing was that they were they were all they, they were talking. These things were written to congregationalists. The whole nation was a congregation. So if you were if you were a Hebrew, right? You you have you have to be in the church, right? In the congregation. We're not these messages are all for people in the church, not for people in the world. Right? Okay. And these were written for people that's in there. There's a generation. How lofty are their eyes? Their eyelids are lifting up. They're always looking above everything and below it's someone else, right? 
people in the congregation is what we're talking about. We can be arrogant and we can't look down on other people. If other people are, are not on our level, if they're not as intelligent with us or or they're they're not as well educated or someone is just just not up to our level and we, we have to be patient with people. No matter what, what they are, we have to do it. You know, if everybody, everybody, he, if we would raise everybody up. We can't look down to anybody. Right. So we have to, we always have to look, you know, help other people. Give them a hand up, not a hand out. No, give them a hand up, right? So, anyway, that's, that's it. We can't be conceited. We are. Okay. Okay. There's a generation who's teeth are sword, their jaw teeth are in mouth, to devour the poor and needy from the earth, from among men. Oh, man, if, if, if we devour somebody up, right, just to be out from what we can get, man, from other people. In the, in the Torah, it says you could, should not put a stumbling block before a blind man, right? You should, you know what, if, if you see something somebody else doesn't see, you know what? They're like a blind man. So you don't ever cast a stumbling block to track anybody else. You know, to get over on business with them. You know, to, to sell a car real cheap if I knew how to really fix it or something like that. You can't take it. If someone is blind to something, they don't see it. You can't take advantage of that. Amen. The, the Lord knows everything. So we have to see everybody. That's the, that's the important. But if you think, well, I've missed it, there's good news. It says, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful. Yeah. And just to forgive us our sins. Yeah. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, if whenever you blow it, Lord, wherever you miss it, you just say, Lord, I did wrong by that. Yeah. Lord, would you forgive me in Jesus' name, Lord? Yeah. Would, would you restore fellowship with me, Lord, help me, Lord, to, to not do this anymore, to treat everybody right, Lord, to obey you. So that's your, that's your goal in life. What, what did Jesus say his goal was? <laughs> to please the Father, right? So that's our, our goal in life. He said he's going to bring many sons to glory, right? Amen. So we're made, we're predestined for us to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, right? He's the last Adam. The first Adam, we're all the sons of sons, but he's the last Adam, the final Adam. Yeah. We are to be conformed to his image. Yeah. We're not we're not to be conformed to the image of the old Adam, you know. Uh, we're, I'm, I'm descended from the old Adam. You are, but when we're born again, we are born from the spirit of Jesus Christ. We're, we're not the same people anymore. <laughs> Amen. That's right. There you go. All right. Ephesians 5, 25 says, says, Husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might, he might present it to himself, the church, a glorious church, not, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. And James said in James 1.27, this is pure and undefiled religion to visit the, wit um, the, the widows and fatherless in their affliction, right? I mean, you know, if they're having it rough, right? And to keep oneself unspotted from the world. So we don't want, we don't want all the sin stains spotted on us. We don't want to be arrogant. We don't want to be like the people of the world where, where, we, where we blow it, where we're spotted, just like that shirt I told you about, right, that I kept the bleaching. It got out. Say, Lord, Lord, cleanse me by the blood of Jesus. Lord, cleanse me from that unrighteousness. I don't want to be like people of the world. I want, I want to be like you, Jesus. Amen. That's, that's your goal in life. Oh, it says in the Song of Songs, that's a symbol of the Lord Jesus Christ and his church, the bride. There's the shepherd, the shepherd and his beloved, right? 
It says to his beloved, he says, Thou art fair, my love, thou art beautiful. And there is no spot in him. So when he sees that bride, he doesn't want to see a spot. He doesn't want to see sin. You know, he don't want to see it. It's smile on your face, it's facing in 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 inside. Uh, you know, <laughs> my my God. Being two faced there, right? Amen. He don't want us to be two faced. He wants to be us to be the same all the time, no matter who we're around, right? Amen. He don't want any spot in front of us. He wants to be washed, us to be washed by the blood of Jesus. Amen. So um, that's um four and seven. Okay, that's a picture of he sees Jesus sees everything. He it says his, his eyes are fire. They appear like wool. He said his eyes are fire. Those pie, if you ever see something in the fire, when it starts burning, it goes right down to the core of everything. All oh, seeing eyes. He sees everything. Amen. First Corinthians eleven twenty eight says, But let a man or woman examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread, or that communion bread, and drink of that cup. Even when you go have communion again, and maybe one of you next week, right? Next Okay, gotcha. Oh, whenever it is, it don't matter. Whenever it is, the next time you do, you examine yourself, right? All the time. You know, whether we be in the face that we've missed it any word, that we have more to say, your Holy Spirit convicts us to lead us to God. And that's what we've got to do. This is every day in your life here. Whether you're on the job or whether you're by yourself, this is it's nothing more important than this. You know, there's lots of symbols in the Bible. There's a lot of symbols in God, the Lord. He put everything in there for a purpose. Everything. Nothing's in here by accident. It's, it's all divinely appointed. And he's used he used his um his prophets to put pin down everything according to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. There's these um back at the time in the the Columbia, Nehemiah, there were like ten gates in Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And, you know, back in the 11th, 12th century, they were like add more gates added, and they closed off some gates. You know, things were changing a lot. <coughs> but there, it, but it, there's a symbol of the Christian life in there. You go, the first gate you go through is the sheep gate. It's the sheep gate in there where they let all the sheep. When he, he inspects you, you know, and one out of every ten is taken. One out of every ten, that tenth is taken on there. But I'm not going to be talking about the sheep gate today. It's the very last gate. It's a scary gate. That's called um, that's called the inspection gate. Jerusalem. It's a scary gate, man. Oh my God, man. I'll tell you a little bit about it. Okay. It's the Mishkot gate. Mishkot. The gate is also called the inspection gate. It's called the appointed place. And if you're in Jerusalem, you've got to go through that gate. And when you leave there, the only other gate you go to is next is the sheep gate. You ever heard of Konigsberg, Germany? Konigsberg bridges, right? The Konigsberg bridges, they had um, um, Leonhard Euler was a mathematician. I learned this in the seventh grade. Um, he said they had this Konigsberg Bridge problem. I think there were like seven bridges or something. Could you cross? There were like two shores and two um, and two little islands or something, right? So what happened? Not really islands, you know what I mean, where the water was. But could you cross? A bridge only one time and come out of uh, there. He said, and Euler found out that it, he solved the problem, but he solved it negatively. He said, you can't do it. The only other way is you'd have to swim it out, to wade out to one of the mounds in order to do that. But just crossing the bridge, you couldn't do it. But anyway, 
in Jerusalem, you couldn't um, get out of going to that gate, right, if you lived there at the time, right? It was it, it's built up now. It's not all the same anymore. But these, but these gates, it's called the inspection gate, the appointed place, the overseeing gate, the mustering gate for the soldiers where they draft them, and also it's a place where they mustered them together for inspection, where they probably had like Brother Will right on on there. They didn't get it right, right? How he, how how um, Brother Will would do right them underneath to him, right? So anyway, but they would every all the troops would be inspected in this gate. Everything. You know, when before you go out to war, everything is a piece of stuff. But anyway, there's war. All right, the sea gate, the first inspection gate is the very last. It says the inspection gate actually leaves where the bodies of the sacrifices were burned. Actually leaves out. The Bible says that we are to be living sacrifices in Romans 12, 1, 12, 2. Where they were burned, and it also leads to John Gotha, right? Right in the city, right in the general area. I've never been there, but I mean, there's some, I hope to make a pilgrimage one day. But anyway, the John Gotha, place of the skull, right? It's where they collected the temple tax, the toll tax, the head, the pole, the face, and the ego. So, so what happens is where the pole tax is paid. Soldiers were drafted, assembled for rigorous inspection. Legal transactions were made there in that day. Judgments were made where they ruled on things there. It's called the appointed place. The place is not far from the Mount of Olives. Not very far. You know, when Jesus comes back, he's going to land on the Mount of Olives and come back with a vengeance for those that don't obey the gospel and those that are enemies of the Lord. And he's coming back there where Jesus will return with all power. Here in Jerusalem, you're going to get here sooner or later. This is the symbolic of the gate of judgment where you're going to go through whether you like it or not. That is 2 Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We must all appear there before the judgment seat of Christ. The demon, there's no way out. There's no way around it. Whenever we go, we're going to go before him, right? What did, what did he say in Corinthians? It says, if any man is built on this gold, silver, right? Precious metal, um, stone, or diamond, emeralds, anything, when it's side by fire, and you put the fire to it, gold is still there, and you get the inheritance of God. But if you put wood, paste, and stubble, paper, anything combustible, anything combustible, if you built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ, and you build anything combustible on there, when the fire hits it, there's going to be nothing left of it. There is just going to be nothing left of it. So everything that we do in the Christian life will actually, we're going to go through that thing, through that at least possible. We're going to go through that, that inspection gate. We're going to go through the inspection gate. And we're just going to inspect our children to get the muscle of the truth to show them, right? Thank you. 
have mercy. So if we confess our sins, Father, I've done this wrong. Uh, and I have been giving you life for that sin. Lord, I know it's sin. Lord, Lord, just just take that from me. But if you try to hide it, it says you won't come. Yeah. If you try to hide that, right? That's what she said this morning, right? Yeah. The, the the man said that if you're trying to hide hide something, right? Mm-hmm. If you try to hide it, you're not going to prosper. Uh, okay, it says Third John two, beloved, I wish above all things. That thou mayest prosper, be in hell, even even as thy soul prospered. So for you to prosper and be in hell, you have to prosper as your soul prospered. So let me ask you today, how is your soul prospering? How are you how are you prospering with Jesus? How is you how are you with spiritual things? Are you prospering with Him? Amen. Are you doing everything He wants you to do? Is there anything? Anything you want to confess before him? Is there anything you want to get under the Lord? Is there anything you want to deal with now where you don't have to deal with later? You're going to have to deal with it later. We go to the judge. You go through that gate, right? The judgment seat of Christ. But the people that are not saved are going to go to the white throne judgment. They'll be judged out of the things that are written in the book. But he'll say, is their name in the book of life? And he died for the whole... You're a human race, right? Yeah. But we have to accept his yeah. sacrifice, right? Yeah. And we don't belong to ourselves either, right? Yeah. What did, um, that was Acts uh, 20, 28. Um, Paul went to visit the, the Ephesian elders. On the beach, she said, take heed to the flock. You know, when I'm going, there'll be grievous wolves entering. Not Bearing the flock, but leaving, keeping up teachers after their own life. It says, He made you overseers of the, of the church, which He purchased through His own blood. Yeah. He purchased, did you know He bought you? Yeah. You know, you don't belong to yourself anymore. I don't belong to myself. We belong to Him. Yeah. We, he paid for us, yeah. right? He didn't know. Rinse, rinse your body on Sunday, right? He's the only or just rinse your face. Rinse the feet on the Sunday, man. You know, but go back and do whatever God knows what. This price, this heavy price. But he owns it. He owns all of us. He bought us out. But he's responsible for us in that case. You don't have to worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or how you're going to pay your bills to buy it. You, you live in where he wants you to live, doing what he wants you to do, then he'll miss the bill. If you if you get off if you get off in, in into those wants, if it's not his will, then you're gonna end up having to pay and struggle to get to maintain that. But if you're doing what he wants you to do, he he'll come through for you every single time. He'll come through. Yeah. Revelation twenty two says he that's unjust, <clears throat> let him be unjust still, right? He told us in the book, 22nd chapter. It says, let him be unjust still. Do you know in the original Greek, it says, that can be translated ignore. Whoever is going to ignore this is what he can say in the Greek. Whoever ignores, whoever ignores. And he that's filthy, whoever is unjust, if you if you translate it ignore, if you ignore everything the Lord wants you to do, if you ignore the message, if you ignore repentance, if you ignore what he wants you to do, let him be filthy still. Let him be filthy more still. And he that's righteous, let him be righteous still. It seems to mean in the original language to progress to more being more righteous. By divine completion, not by our own, right? And he that's holy, let him be more holy still. When we leave this life, we'll be permanently frozen. Do you realize that? Permanently frozen, whatever whatever state you check out in, right? Whatever, whenever you leave, you're going to be stuck in that state for eternity. Because things don't change. You don't get old in eternity, right? You got on this earth, you got a ticking clock, right? 
Remember in Revelation, um, he said that time will be no more. Time will not exist anymore. Then when the Lord says, all right, that's it, no more time. No more, that's the end of it. But in eternity, whatever whatever state you're in, you don't need to stop for that. Whatever your robe is, if it has those stains, like I told you about the shirt. And we don't deal with them now. Those take me. So let me ask you, are there ignored sins in your life? That's what it, what it says here. Let him be unjust still. It, or the, is there ignored sins buried in your life? Ignored things you haven't dealt with with the Lord. Are there any? I, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. I mean, if we're all honest with you, ourselves, it belong, it, that, that's every one of us needs to do that. I mean, to be, you know, every man, woman, and child, you know, boy, girl, Every one of us, if we're honest with it, is there things that we ignore, that we need to deal with? Lord, Lord, Lord I've been holding on to that sin, or I haven't done what you wanted me to do here, Lord, that, that I'm, willing to, I'm willing to do it. If you just help me do it, Lord, just give, give me a, a hand and help me do it. I'm, I'm willing to confess that before you, Lord. I'm willing to you deal with me now rather than later on, Lord. But Revelation 7.13 says, One of the elders answered to me, saying, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence come they? And he said to me, These are they which come out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night. So all the all the the robes to the whitest snow when you get to heaven are once gotten that way by being washed by the blood of the Lamb, confessing your sins and forsaking them, letting him order and adjust your life. Anything ignored that you you go back and deal with it. Now, you can deal with it now, or you can deal with it later. It'll be very expensive later. Therefore, okay, and the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. So he was. He wasn't making you ready. You've got to get yourself ready. You've got to put on... Oh, you got to put on your clothes. You've got to get yourself washed. We have to make ourselves ready for the Lord. We have, we have to be ready. <clears throat> we have to make ourselves. Are you making yourself ready? We must all before appear before the judgment seat of Christ. I'm just going to leave it there. So, so it, it's up to us what, what we do from here. But the rewards are great. Like I said, 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, be in health even as thy soul prosper. So your soul has to prosper. We have to prosper, prosper in the things of the Spirit. And if you look like Jesus, if you look like Jesus, what will the Father not give you? What will he not do for you if, if you are like his son? It'd be immeasurable. Amen. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stop there. Uh,